Joining us now on the markets, Tom Lee, uh, head of research at Fundstrat uh, Global Advisors, chief investment officer at Fundstrat Capital. And the list goes on and on. And he's a, a CNBC contributor, first post-election uh, ap- uh, appearance that we've had. Um, you knew Trump was going to win. I do. I think that the election has cleared and obviously what everyone expected didn't happen. And now we have the Republicans, we'll say, in in charge of Washington. I think we're going to have less regulation. You feel animal spirits in the market already, right? I think you saw regional banks up close to 10 percent the other day. And so I think that we're going to have people excited about the economy next year. I think there's going to be different spots that do well next year. I definitely think the broadening is going to continue. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to think about inflation as rates are coming down. We're all going to continue to talk about deficits and deficit spending. But interest rates cause inflation, not deficits. And so I think four years from now, we're still going to be talking about deficits. And so I think as long as inflation is going in the right direction, the economy is set up to do really well. Earnings visibility refers to the clarity investors have about the future earnings of companies. Lee is noting that there's more certainty in the earnings outlook, meaning companies are expected to deliver solid earnings growth moving forward. Well, not many people did. Yes, that's... uh, I'll give you credit. We were placing a lot more weight on what the betting markets were pointing to. And so, uh, and we, you know, when we look at all the deltas, that's... And you saw it in the Trump trade, and you saw it in Bitcoin. Correct. And you saw it in sectors of the market that would benefit from. That's right. Right. Do we have a a window of opportunity for risk on here for at least from Election Day to Inauguration Day, if not further? I think we do. Uh, You know, we were very lucky enough to change our target to 6100 when we did. Uh, We saw that there was still a lot of money on the sidelines. You saw that reactionary trade on Wednesday when people piled into financials. And as you know, I love to say financials, financials, financials. But we really believe that people were underinvested there, Scott. And so when you see that type of move, that only exemplifies that. That's number one. Akin to what Bryn's saying, we've been saying for months now that the broadening out is happening. And that is actually really, really, really positive. Now, I'm not going to steal my thunder for my forecast for next year. Uh, It would be great if we're up 25% again next year. I don't think we're going to be. However, it actually could be more of a positive year, quite frankly, because you have more companies that are earning better, that are more attractively valued. You have performance from value, dividend growth, small mid cap. And I I think next year is going to be really the year one of this phase of normalization. The Federal Reserve is expected to remain dovish, meaning it is likely to keep interest rates low and avoid tightening monetary policy aggressively. A dovish Fed is supportive for the stock market because low interest rates make borrowing cheaper, which stimulates investment and consumer spending. Uh, I think we need to respect this move. I mean, there was a tremendous rally post-election and it continued yesterday. I think it really does reflect a lot of money was taken out of the market because of the uncertainty around the election. And now we know that because of policy changes and animal spirits that this is really going to benefit things like Bitcoin and small caps and regional banks and financials. So I do think there's still a lot of upside. I mean, small caps trade at 10 times median forward earnings. Okay, Shen, so take stock, if you will, of, of this week and now how you're thinking about if there is, in fact, a reset for expectations on what the market can do uh, for the next, you know, five weeks um, or se- like seven weeks, excuse me, and then beyond that. I think the reset is really on the magnitude of the rally that we could have into the middle of the, to the end of the year, excuse me. Um, I think many of us thought that with this veil of uncertainty lifted, that we would see, similar to other U.S. presidential years, that we would see a rally into the end of the year. However, I think that we saw glimpses of, prior to the election, you know, some of that resurgence of that mega cap growth tr- trade and that concentration that we had seen. People were really hunkering down for those that did have strong growth positioning in areas that had done well earlier in the year and we saw that that he also draws a connection between the rise in bitcoin and other market movements noting that investors saw trump's victory as a potential game changer for the economy and markets i mean that's a so you did, so what do you think that should be 12 times I mean, what kind, uh, what's the what's the opportunity set in your mind well s- since 1987 small caps traded on a median pe basis at a premium to the s&p the s&p is at 17 times so i think small caps could in the next couple years outperform by you know more than 100% Tom Lee reflects on the magnitude of the rally that followed Trump's election. 
The market surged dramatically after the results were known, and Lee recognizes that this rally, which saw stock indexes like the Dow Jones jump by 1,500 points right after the election. Uh, as James Carville famously said, you know, uh, the bond market is, everyone's scared of the bond market. So that is something we need to watch. But we've had plenty of periods where stocks have risen with bonds rising. And I, and I kind of agree with Powell's assessment that it's not be, yields have gone up not because of inflation, but because there's sort of a change in growth expectations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think part of the reason investors are getting somewhat optimistic is that President Trump is entering office again, but this time with a lot more knowledge of how to build a, you know, a cabinet and a team. And um, so in some ways, this would end up being more market friendly. And, and I think that's why investors are becoming optimistic. I mean, I kind of agree with the idea that there are animal spirits growing. We'll never be deficit friendly. Lee is generally optimistic about the market's future in light of the election. He recognizes the magnitude of the initial post-election rally and implies that it's not just a short-term event, but potentially a long-term trend. It seems like... It, it's going to be very difficult to fix the deficit with just changes in taxes and spending. But it's probably why Bitcoin is kind of interesting here, because uh, it's potentially a treasury reserve asset. And, you know, as, if Bitcoin rises in price, it actually helps offset more next year and the year after. Yeah, I, th I think because now, you know, post having and uh, now Bitcoin's becoming a lot more relevant and I think maybe the regulatory overhang is, is diminishing that there's a lot of upside from here, yes. Okay, S&P, um, end of next year. He suggests that while he didn't explicitly say Trump would win, he placed significant weight on what the betting markets were indicating. Well, I, uh, between now and year end, Five to 10% is probably More. the base case, just because that's the type of rally post-election and we have a dovish Fed and, you know, the normal seasonals. Is that the right move right now for the Fed? I think inflation fighting uh, war is largely over and, you know, the real rate is still too high. So I agree with Fed's view that we need to move towards neutral, which, you know, which is towards 3%. So I think it is supportive of markets and, uh, you know, business investment has been constrained. So I think these things are positive. He forecasts the SP500 could rise above 6,000 points by year end 2024 and potentially reach around 6,700 points sometime in 2025. Yeah, more than 6,000 6, before year end. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I think it, at least for the foreseeable future. No recession. No recession. And, and people want you to answer when I ask you a question. So what do you say? 60, what hundred on, on the S&P? Uh, I think well past like 6700 no sometime 6700 yeah sometime next year because that's margin... another 20 percent isn't it yeah it's well it... here lee is pivoting to a more unconventional solution to the deficit problem bitcoin he suggests that bitcoin could play a role as a treasury reserve asset what he means by this is that as bitcoin's value increases it could become a store of value that helps to offset some of the financial liabilities like the national debt or the growing deficit. If Bitcoin's value rises, it could provide the US government with a potential asset to help back its financial obligations, somewhat like how gold was used historically. Dot, 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 die, yes. If Bitcoin rises in price, it actually helps offset the liabilities, which is the deficit. Lee elaborates on the idea that if the price of Bitcoin increases, it could have the effect of helping to mitigate the impact of the deficit. The idea is that if the US were to hold Bitcoin, or if Bitcoin is seen as a major asset in the broader financial system, a rise in Bitcoin's value could lead to financial gains, which could, in theory, help reduce the deficit. 4. Bitcoin's price and future outlook. You were at 150, I think, on Bitcoin, weren't you? This refers to a past price prediction that Lee made for Bitcoin, possibly forecasting a price of $150,000 or some other significant figure. He's referring to his prior forecast and asking about the possibility of that price point being reached. Not necessarily by the end of this year, or I think six figures is still possible for before the end of the year. Lee is indicating that while his original prediction might not materialize by the end of the current year, he still believes that Bitcoin could reach six figures, i.e. $100,000 or more before the year is over. Yeah, but, and then more next year and the year after. Lee is optimistic about Bitcoin's long-term growth, suggesting that not only is six figures possible soon, but Bitcoin could continue to rise in value in the coming years. 
He emphasizes that post-halving, which refers to Bitcoin's halving events that reduce the reward for mining new blocks, often seen as a catalyst for price increases, Bitcoin is becoming more relevant likely because of its growing acceptance and use as an asset class. Dot, 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 now Bitcoin's becoming a lot more relevant, and I think maybe the regulatory overhang is diminishing. Lee mentions that Bitcoin is becoming more relevant, which could mean that its adoption is increasing and that it is gaining more legitimacy in the financial system. He also notes that the regulatory overhang is diminishing, suggesting that the regulatory uncertainty surrounding Bitcoin is lessening, which could provide more confidence for investors and make Bitcoin more attractive as an asset. There's a lot of upside from here. Finally, Lee expresses confidence that Bitcoin still has a lot of potential for growth, suggesting that it could rise significantly in price due to its increasing relevance and improving regulatory outlook. SP500 mention. SP. End the next. While this part is incomplete, Lee might be transitioning to talk about the stock market, particularly the SP500. He might be indicating that, while Bitcoin could be an interesting asset to hedge against deficit concerns, traditional assets like the SP500 are also part of the broader investment landscape. However, this part is left unclear in the statement. Market growth outlook for the rest of the year Tom Lee begins by suggesting that he expects the stock market to rise by about 5-10% to by the end of the year. He refers to this as the base case meaning he thinks this is the most likely scenario. His reasoning is based on historical trends of stock market rallies that typically occur after US. Elections, a period where market sentiment can improve. This post-election rally is often fueled by a combination of political clarity and economic adjustments that follow the elections. Additionally, Lee points out that the Federal Reserve's stance is more dovish i.e., more supportive or less aggressive in tightening monetary policy, which he believes will further help markets. He also notes that seasonal factors tend to favour market growth during this time. Federal Reserve's current is making the right moves, Lee agrees with the Fed's perspective that the battle against inflation is largely over. While inflation is still a concern, he argues that the real interest rate the interest rate adjusted for inflation is still too high, and that the Fed needs to move towards a neutral rate a level that neither stimulates nor restricts the economy. For Lee, this neutral rate should be around 3%, which is in line with the Fed's current approach. By moving towards this neutral rate, Lee believes the Fed is being supportive of the economy, which can in turn support business investment. So, in Lee's view, the current monetary policy is appropriate and will help keep the economy stable. Business investment constraints Lee also mentions that business investment has been constrained. This likely refers to the fact that businesses have been cautious in their investments due to higher borrowing costs resulting from the Fed's interest rate hikes over the past couple of years. He sees this as a positive sign, suggesting that if the Fed continues to ease, or at least stops tightening, businesses might be able to resume or increase investments, which would help drive economic growth. Market outlook for 2025, looking ahead to 2025, Lee anticipates the market could rise by another 5 to 10%. This growth would bring major indices like the SP500 well above 6,000 points by the end of 2024, and even closer to 6,700 points sometime in 2025. Essentially, Lee is projecting continued strong performance in the stock market, suggesting that the market will move past some psychological barriers like 6,000 points, a milestone that is often discussed by analysts. No recession in sight, Lee emphasizes that he doesn't see a recession on the horizon, at least in the foreseeable future. This is an important point because many analysts and investors often factor in the risk of a recession when making predictions. By ruling out a recession, Lee is signaling that he expects the economy to grow steadily rather than contract, which supports his optimistic view on the stock market's trajectory. Key takeaways. Lee expects 5 to 10% growth in the stock market by the end of 2024, driven by a combination of post-election optimism, a dovish Fed, and favorable seasonality. He agrees with the Fed's approach of moving towards a neutral interest rate around 3%, which he believes will be supportive of economic and market growth. Lee sees business investment as being constrained, but believes this could improve with the right monetary policy. He doesn't see a recession coming and believes the economy will avoid significant downturns in the near term. Earnings visibility. This makes the market more attractive because investors can feel more confident about the ability of businesses to generate profits, which supports higher stock prices. A continued dovish Federal Reserve Fed. Additionally, 
low interest rates make stocks more attractive relative to bonds, further boosting demand for equities. Election cycle behind us. Lee also highlights that the US election cycle is behind us. Elections can create uncertainty in the markets because investors are unsure of what policy changes might be enacted based on the outcome. Once the elections are over, that uncertainty tends to fade and markets often respond positively as investors gain clarity about the political landscape and potential economic policies. Overall positive outlook for US stocks. Lee's general sentiment is one of optimism about the US stock market. He notes that there are multiple tailwinds or favorable factors supporting the market, including stable margin debt, solid earnings expectations, a dovish Fed, and the end of the election cycle. All of these elements are contributing to a positive outlook for the fundamentals of the US economy and the stock market. Conclusion. Buh. In essence, Tom Lee is saying that the US stock market could continue to rise next year by 10 to 20 percent because of a confluence of factors that suggest the market is in a favorable position. The lack of increased margin debt suggests investors aren't over leveraging, while solid earnings growth, a supportive Fed and the end of election related uncertainty all point to a positive environment for US stocks. His overall message is one of cautious optimism, highlighting the fundamental strength of the US market and the likelihood that these tailwinds will continue to propel stocks higher in the near future. Number 1. Market Predictions and Trump's Election Victory Tom Lee starts by acknowledging that, at the time of the election, many people did not expect Donald Trump to win the presidency, but he himself had a strong belief in the possibility. Betting markets, often seen as a more accurate reflection of the probability of an event, had been signalling that Trump had a higher chance of winning than many analysts and pundits predicted. 2. Trump's influence on market behaviour. Lee goes on to explain how the markets responded to the election results, particularly with sectors and assets that were expected to benefit from a Trump presidency. The Trump trade, as it was called, was characterised by a rally in certain sectors that were expected to thrive under a Trump administration, such as defence, energy and financials. Lee's implication is that market participants anticipated a more favourable business environment with lower regulations, tax cuts and a more nationalistic approach to trade ideas that were part of Trump's campaign. As a result, there was a surge in asset classes that were viewed as benefiting from these policies. 3. Market rally post-election was extraordinary. However, he doesn't seem to view the rally as an isolated event. Instead, he suggests that the market's post-election performance is part of a larger trend and that there may still be more upside potential to come. Lee seems to caution that investors should respect the magnitude of the move the rally was significant and continued even into the days after the election. He doesn't suggest that the rally is over but instead highlights the possibility that the market might have more room to grow based on the economic policies that were expected to unfold under Trump's leadership. 4. General optimism about market direction. His tone suggests that he believes the market's reaction to the Trump presidency is based on fundamentals that will continue to play out over time, particularly in sectors that were seen as benefiting from his policies.